Hey guys, what's happening? So, in my quest to get better, like uh, antenna signal skipping, decided to build two antennas. I made another uh, video about this called the Dark Star, but um, I need to get an antenna on the roof before it starts raining. So, I decided to scale this back and just go with um, what's it called? Uh, just three uh, three ground planes. So that's gonna be a quarter wave ground plane. And I'm also building a uh, half wave dipole. So this is a one to one bailing, got on Amazon for 13 bucks. Put a link down below, but I've already cut the, I've already cut the uh, wires out. So these are 108 inches. And I just got them for a length, but I actually have a little crimps on the end of them. So in my other previous video, I showed you how I have this uh, Nano VNA H4. Um, you know, with my custom best stand right there. Um, but I wanted to do some more antenna testing because now that I have a pretty cool like antenna tester, I mean, I can really actually probably dial this thing in more than just like a, a typical like SWR meter. Um, so I need to print out some, um, so on the end cap, I need to put some end caps on there. So, you know, so I can adjust the antenna, but I know some people, they, they curl the antenna over, but some people say that adds capacitance or something like that, or it creates, it, it's not exactly perfect. So I'm gonna try to design, I'm gonna use my little ABS printer here. That I, I made a couple videos about me doing conversion, but so I, I gotta design some end, end mounts that can actually hold a rope and also hold on the end of the wire. So I'm gonna try to do it without bending the wire, but, I don't really know, like I said, I, I mean, I guess I could do bending the wire, but and wrapping the wire around. So I think for me, my, I mean, I looked it up. So for like a quarter wave antenna, the ideal length for like channel 38, which I'm probably gonna be on right here, you know, channel 38. Um, I'm really more into like uh, the, the single sideband that's giving, you know, long distance communications. Um, so yeah, I think it was 106 point something inches for, for the third channel 38. So that's actually, I'm gonna dial the, the antenna in for channel 38. All right, so last night I created these little uh, wire latches to connect to the end of the wire. So I'm just gonna put them on the end of the wire. Instead of actually wrapping them back around, you know, I'm just gonna, they're like wire latches. So the way they work is the wire fits in there and you see like the little hole in there. Well, the idea was to, um, this will be on my Thingiverse page if you guys want it to. Um, it's to put, it pushes the, it pushes the wire into that little hole, which kind of locks it in place. So it creates a kink in the wire, which kind of locks it in place. And I've actually tried pulling on this pretty hard and it won't pull out. So, plus you, you shouldn't have it so tight where it should pull out anyways. But this, like I said, since it has that kink, it doesn't, I mean, this is stiff wire too. This is, what is this? Okay. See, this is really old wire. I've had this wire for probably 20 or 30 years. Um, it's 12 gauge wire, solid copper. Um, another thing I, I ran a line, I was kind of wondering, it's like, how good is this thing? Because this thing is rated at QRP. So I'm going to test it, but this is like that super $13 one on Amazon. And I looked at some of the reviews, and they, a picture of the box opened up, and it looked horrible inside. <laughs> like, you can see why it cost thirteen dollars. So I'm gonna hook it up to my 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 test wires and, and see my it's my garage here and hook it up to my Nano VNA and see if uh, see what we get here because um, yeah I don't want to go through the headache of putting all this stuff up and it doesn't work right you know so I mean a, a decent balance costs about fifty bucks one to one balance so all right so here's a closer look at the king that that thing puts in the wire see right there. So that's what kind of locks it in place or prevents it from pulling out. Um, if you're wondering why these prints look so horrible, um, this is actually an ABS. ABS is a difficult film to, to get correct, you know, getting the, the speed correct, the cooling correct. It's just, it's generally a difficult film to print with, but because this might go out in the sun, I wanted to print in a plastic that would uh, last. So this was like a totally impulsive buy. So I have one feeding into that bush right there. I hooked up to an bungee cord. Go back, do a test real fast. All right. I know it's not perfectly straight. 
SWR4. It's 108 inches each uh, wire. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but the SWR is around 4. I know this should be around here on the Smith chart. I'm still learning the Smith chart. So I'm only scanning uh, you know, the CB range here. So I know this should be here in the center. The resistance is, where is it? 110 ohms. Hmm. Maybe I'll mess around. I don't want to cut it yet because I feel like the bailing, because from what I read, this bailing is, this bailing is horrible. So, I mean, my wire link is 108 inches per span, per wire. I know it makes a difference if it's like inverted or like, you know, slopes down or slopes up. Like this stuff can change, but I mean, I know it's slipping sort of down because I have pressure on it, but it shouldn't be totally that much out of whack. Let me do a, uh, go back and do a recall of different bands. I'll do, well, this is 80 meters. Wow. So that went up way high, the SWR. All right, 40 meters, five. 20 meters. That's interesting. So the SWR goes down. The higher you're, let's, let's try two meters. <laughs> What's up with that? So look at the SWR. That's two meters. Let's try 440. It's 20 or 70 centimeters. Okay. That's odd. Um, well, I don't know a lot about antennas. <laughs> I'm a ham rookie. Um, but I think it's fun. It's an interesting topic. I mean, I work in IT for a living, not, not antenna stuff. Um, well, a different kind of RF, mainly like Wi-Fi, inter internet stuff. Um, okay. That's interesting. So why... Um, CB band... Why would it be, I mean, I got a 108 inch span, so why would it be, why would it be, it should be dialed in for, for uh, CB right now. So I guess in theory, this should be a half wave antenna, you know, because I got 108, 108. It's a half a wavelength. So, well, I'm getting continuity between the terminals here and here. I can get that on camera. But... I'm getting continuity between the terminals. So, should I be getting continuity between the terminals? I thought they were supposed to be separated. So I'm getting continuity between both terminals. Um, I mean, I was looking at other people's pictures and it didn't seem like they'd be connected together. So did something come loose in there? Like, I mean, I've seen different pictures of different one-to-one -one, uh, balance. And, um, it didn't seem like they were connected. I mean, there was so many there's multiple different ways to do this, but I don't know. This is like, you know, I wish I knew more about these things. Um, I've been studying, looking at diagrams, trying to figure it out. But um, like I said, I'm not really an RF. I mean, I'm definitely not an RF engineer. I, mean, I work in IT for a living, so uh, technical, but just not this sort of technical. Um, so it looks like the. Where are these things wrapped together? How, are they, how am I getting continuity between the two? They must be connected somewhere in here. All right, so here's a closer look at it. I hope you can see that in the camera. It'll zoom in. Um, so the yellow wire starts and it's connected to the red wire. So they're they're connected together at their yellow and red. And then it looks like that red wire wraps around, but then it connects together with that copper wire, which is feeding the uh, ground side. So that's how I'm getting continuity between the two. At least that's the way it looks. You can't... Yeah, I'm just looking at it. And then it's fed... I don't know, like I said, I don't know if that's correct or not. So if you guys are watching this video, let me know down below. You know, the closer I look at this, I mean, I look at some diagrams for some a nine to one ballon, and it's wired just like the diagrams I've seen for a nine to one ballon. 
how they're connected together via this red wire strapped around. So basically the, the two sides are being shorted by this red wire right here. They connect here, they wrap around the, the core and they come back around and they're shorted here. So I don't know if that's a good idea or bad idea. I mean, it's shorting the terminals, you know? I don't think that's a good idea. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I, said, I don't know a lot about, you know, antenna science. So at least I'm just, I'm just learning this stuff. So, um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If this is a nine to one or if this is just put together wrong or it's a one to one. I don't think it's a one to one just because of the, the way the, the antenna is behaving. I mean, I guess I saw another guy that seemed like he was knowledgeable. He was putting resistors between the contacts here. And he said once he got up to like a 450 ohm resistor, it would actually bring the SWR down. So, mm, I don't think I have a 450 ohm resistor. So, right, so it seems to receive pretty good. All right, so let me know if you guys have any ideas on how to test this thing. You know, I heard some people say put like a 50 ohm resistor across the terminals, but... Yeah, I'm not an RF guy, so <laughs> I'm just some guy having fun in his garage. So, yeah, it's a fun subject, man. But it's antennas are, I mean, that's a trippy subject, you know. So there's, there's no absolutes. It's just, you know, it's uh, kind of a headache, but it's fun, you know. All right, so 13 bucks. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let me know what you guys think below. All right, cool.